It's been a while since I've done any recipe videos and I figured I'd go ahead and show this one because it's easy to make. I don't really make it very often. A couple times a year. But yesterday, Brother Johnson stopped by from the church. Sadly, I slept through his visit because I've been working a lot of late hours. My sleep times are off. But he dropped off a butternut squash. So, here's the butternut squash. And I'm going to show you my version of a roasted cinnamon butternut squash. So, in order to do this, we all know that when I do recipes, I will tell you an amount, but I usually don't measure it. Um, but you're going to start out with a bowl with a lid, and you're going to put about one and a half tablespoons of olive oil in there. Again, I hardly ever measure anything. I just pour and stuff until it looks right. Um, you're also going to need one and a half tablespoons of maple syrup. Um, if you don't have maple syrup, you could use pancake mix if you wanted to. And why am I not able to get this lid off? Oh, wow. Must have been a while since I must have really ate the Wheaties the day I put this lid on last time. Anyways, one and a half tablespoons maple syrup. I like maple syrup. <laughs> I'll put a little extra in there. Then you're going to need about one and three quarter teaspoons of salt. Everybody knows how I do salt. Something like that. Then you are going to need three quarter teaspoons of cinnamon. I think this is a new thing of cinnamon. It is, for some reason, I probably have another one that's already open. Let me see if I can find that one. Alright, back to our three quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. I did find the one that was already open. Never hurts to have too much cinnamon. happen to like cinnamon a lot then you're also going to need some black pepper now I'm using peppercorns which is kind of a mix of pepper you can use just straight black pepper if you want it's entirely up to you you can leave the pepper out if you wanted to. You don't have to make this the way that I do. All right. Once we have all that done, the next thing we need to do is get our uh, butternut squash cut up. And I'll show you how to do that. Just leave this sit right there. One thing you might want to go ahead and do right now is set your oven for 400 degrees. Preheat it. So I went ahead and set that, and let's get this butternut cut up. Alright, so normally the way I start with, or the way that I cut butternut squash is, I lay it down on a cutting board. I cut it lengthwise in half, and then I cut the halves in half. And then I just kind of use a spoon or a knife to kind of like scoop it out. I don't really get fancy with it, because I just like to eat it. I don't want to look at it and think it's pretty. Let me see if I can adjust this camera a little bit. I'm kind of actually cooking something in the Instant Pot, so it makes it kind of hard for me to do stuff like this. Anywho, I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. Now, let me get something and get these seeds scooped out and the rest is cleaned up and then I'll bring you back to what I've got left. 
All right, so you can now see that I got rid of the seeds and most of the stringy stuff in there. Like, some people are really funny about getting all of the stringy stuff out. I'm kind of indifferent. It don't matter to me. I'm still going to eat it whether it's there or not. So the next thing that I do, and the way that I found this easiest way to do this, is I take and just cut this into chunks. And then I'll take a, like a, a, a peeler and then get rid of the excess uh, hard part that's on the outside here. So I'm going to cut this into chunks, then I'll use a pillar to get, uh, like a potato pillar, to get rid of the rest. And I don't try to be like too perfect. Like I said, I use a like a potato pillar. And this comes off pretty easy that way. That's kind of the way I've always done it. See? Usually what I do, I cut that rind off of everything, then I give it a quick rinse under the water. So let me get that done, I'll bring it back. So once you've got everything cut up, that's what you've got. You're going to put the lid up. Or you're going to put the lid on this. You're going to shake it up to get everything mixed up. Let me bring you back when that's done. And there's what we look like after tossing us a few times. So the next thing you're going to do, you're going to take like a cookie sheet and line it with uh, either parchment or aluminum foil or just put it right on the cookie sheet or the kick pan or whatever you want to use. And then you're going to stick that in the oven. 400 degrees for 10 minutes when the 10 minutes is up you're going to take it out of the oven rotate everything 180 degrees so you're cooking it on both sides and put it back in there for about another 10 minutes so let me bring you along for those steps all right so i couldn't actually find my cookie sheet so i just stuck them in this cake pan that'll work just fine too stick it in the oven Again, 400 degrees, 10 minutes. When the timer goes off, then you're going to take it out, turn everything over, put it back in there for about another 10 minutes. And this is what it'll look like for most people when you're done cooking it. Um, you might have to adjust your cooking time also, depending on how thick the pieces were. I think I ended up doing 15 minutes on each side. Now, I have a little secret how I dress these up one more step further, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And this is my secret that makes this over the top. This is plain cinnamon and sugar like you would put on toast. And this is a meal that I just made. Basically, I just sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon sugar on top of this. Just like that. So, hope you enjoyed this. As always, thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.